Okay, children, gather around, because I'm going to tell you a story about a microphone. So I was tracking uh, a singer. This was a few years ago, and I'm in this studio. Uh, the, the guy who owns it uh, is a really well-known engineer. In fact, he tracked some pretty amazing records there. Uh, Mariah Carey was tracked there. Public Enemy cut their first album there. So the guy knew what he was talking about. And I had a particular singer. Now, he needed a little help in the tone area, right? So when that happens, I usually reach for the studio's mic locker and I put up a bunch of different mics and I see what works best with the vocalist. So the engineer says to me, he's like, I got this modded Neumann U87. It sounds great. I've been using it for 20 years. Beats out everything I got. Let's throw that up. I bet you it's going to work. I said, okay, great. And then I brought over this mic, which I bring to every session. It's very cheap. It's a RE10 by Electro Voice. It's old, it's vintage, but like it's still cheap. It's not vintage price. You can get one on eBay for like 100 bucks. This is my If All Else Fails mic. So I put this one up and I had the singer sing on every mic and then we did a blind taste test. And then when we got to this mic, the engineer says, Oh, that's the 87. Listen how good that sounds. And then we went to his 87. Didn't sound as good as this mic. Doesn't mean that this mic is better than the 87. That's much more expensive than this. It just meant that this mic agreed with the vocalist. And the reason why I bring it to all these sessions is because sometimes when I'm having a problem getting a vocal tone, this mic sort of comes in and does the job for me. So the moral of the story is you don't need an expensive microphone to get a great vocal sound. It, it, all that matters is that you know what the vocalist is putting out and that you have a microphone that agrees with them. Now, the reason why I'm talking about all this is because most of us are on a tight budget when it comes to recording and microphones happen to be very, very expensive. So don't feel like all hope is lost. When you're looking for a microphone, you have to think about what is the type of music that you're going to be recording the most. If it's rock, that is going to lead you in a different direction than if you were recording R&B or if you were recording jazz. You can't just go and buy a mic. These great engineers that came before us, they didn't walk into the studio with one mic. They had a lot of different mics at their disposal. But in this day and age, when studios are shutting down and there's not that many places to go to test out these microphones, all that means is that you have to do a little bit of research. So here are some things you can consider when you're searching for a microphone on a budget. So let's get one thing out of the way real quick. If you're looking to buy a remake of a vintage classic, like a vintage U67 that uh, is on the market for 60 grand, right? You think you're going to buy a $500 microphone that sounds like that because they advertise it's a budget remake? There's no way. There's no way that microphone is going to sound like the vintage model. Get that out of your head. And you shouldn't even be worried about that. What you should be worried about is what is the best vocal or microphone performance that you can get with the amount of money that you have to spend. Now, that takes testing. So the engineers that we look up to that came before us, they were lucky enough to have studios that they worked out of where they could test any mic they wanted. And they picked the one that they felt suited them and suited their taste. We don't have that luxury anymore because unfortunately studios are shutting down and it's harder for us to go in and test a bunch of microphones because microphones are very expensive and the studios that are left open their microphone selection, unless you're, you know, going to a big facility in LA or in Nashville, the microphone selections are getting smaller and smaller. So what can we do? Well, guess what? The internet exists. So you can go online, there's shootouts. This mic versus this mic. A budget versus the real thing. If you really want to hear and compare what these budgets sound like versus the real thing, and that's important to you, there's ways to find out if they do come close. And if they come close enough for you, 
then you could feel more confident about picking it up. But by all means, don't go in blind. Don't go and pick a microphone because you went on to a message board or you know, you asked a bunch of people on the internet and they say, oh, you got to have a U67 if you're doing pop music. So you go and get some kind of budget version of that. And, and then at the end of the day, it doesn't sound anything like that U67. It will never sound anything like that U67, especially if they're saying it sounds like something that's vintage. Get that out of your head. What really matters is that the microphone or any tool for that matter suits your taste and it complements the stuff that you're trying to do. You unfortunately have to go and you have to do some testing. So make sure that you can at least hear samples of the microphone before you buy it. And don't worry, like I said in the other video, Michael Jackson was put on a $400 microphone. Quincy Jones, one of the greatest producers in the whole world, made that decision based upon how he performs. And that's one of the biggest selling albums. I think it's actually the biggest selling album of all time. So if you don't have a lot of bread to spend on a microphone, fear not. You can get a great vocal sound, or any sound for that matter, uh, with any type of mic, but you gotta do your research.